Hello. In this video, I'm going to do two things. I will explain and give you a historical background for Prisoner's Dilemma, and then I will take you through a Python simulation done on REPL that you can play with for the Prisoner's Dilemma. If you want to skip straight to the coding part, go to about the seven minute mark. If you want to listen to the theory, continue listening. Now, Prisoner's Dilemma is a game. It's based on a scenario where the police capture two criminals who are caught doing a minor crime, a crime for which they would do one year in jail. However, these two criminals are also suspected of a larger crime, a crime that would have a 10-year jail sentence. So, what the police does is divide and conquer. The two, the two uh, arrested criminals are separated and they're urged to testify against their partner. Now, since neither of them has any idea of what their partner is doing, um, they have to consider their own self-interest. And in this particular game, there is something called an equilibrium condition, which I'm going to elaborate on. So. Basically, let's say you are one of the criminals. We'll take it from your point of view. So your sentence is marked here, and your partner's sentence is marked down there. So let's say this. Your partner cooperates. Let's say that's what he does. So you have two options once he's cooperated. You can cooperate or defect. Well, if you cooperate, you are going to have one year. If you defect, you're going to go free. Party time. So, logically speaking, in case of your partner cooperating, you should defect. Let's see what happens if your partner defects. Okay, if he defects and you cooperate, you get 10 years. If he defects and you defect, you get 5 years. Still, these are two pretty bad options, but defecting is the better option. Your partner is in pretty much exactly the same situation. Um, if you cooperate, he has two options, cooperate or defect. Defecting sets him free, so defecting is his better option. And if you defect, he's either going to spend 10 years in jail if he cooperates, and he's going to spend five years in jail if he defects, so he will also defect. And this here is the equilibrium situation, the sort of game theory optimal situation, which is something that uh, you might have seen in a movie called A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe plays John Nash in the movie, and John Nash is a mathematical genius who becomes a very, very young professor at Princeton. And the, the, the movie tells a story of how Nash came up with the Nash Equilibrium, which I really think is a bit embellished in a case of Hollywood not letting uh, the truth get in the way of a good story. But I still have to recount it to you, because it's awesome. So. In this story, what you have is John Nash. There he is, sitting in a bar with three of his friends. And they're talking mathematics, economics, smoking, drinking. And at some point, there's a number of pretty girls that walk into a bar. There they are, five of them. And they all get talking amongst themselves, and as those guys do, and they so I say, oh man, the tall blondes beautiful like they all like her and one of John Ash's friends says well as we know from economics Adam Smith says that if we all pursue our selfish uh, our self-interest then the outcome is going to be best for everybody and John Nash thinks about it and thinks about it and he disagrees and he explains why basically saying that if they all hit on the tall blonde, what's going to happen is she's going to feel overwhelmed and reject them all. Then they're going to go to their friends and the friends are going to feel like they're second best and the friends will reject them all. So they will all fail abjectly if they all start off by competing for the affections of the tall blonde. Meaning that that is far, far, far from optimal strategy. However, if they were to ignore the blonde, um, then they would be able to um, get the attention of the friends and the friends would actually 
you know, probably get a, a lot of affection for the guys because normally guys would be hitting on the tall blonde. So that would be the best outcome for everybody. And he describes that as the equilibrium point. After this, the friends are convinced and Nash runs off to write down this mathematical theory which makes him famous. Now, that's the Hollywood story. What the Hollywood story doesn't tell you is that game theory itself was invented by John von Neumann. And John von Neumann was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. He actually uh, devised the mathematics which expresses quantum physics and wrote the mathematical foundations of computer science, among also inventing game theory, of which John Nash just um, mathematically expressed the Nash equilibrium scenario which we explained in The Prisoner's Dilemma. Now, in case this is all too abstract and The Prisoner's Dilemma doesn't quite make sense, don't despair. There is a perfect example of this in pop culture. And it is this game show. And that's called Golden Balls. You should look it up on YouTube if there's any doubt. The way that this show works is that contestants play a game show and Two people end up with a giant prize pool in the end, uh, tens of thousands of pounds usually. And they have to choose the prisoner's dilemma choices. They can either split or steal. If they both split, they split the money. If they both steal, they both go home with nothing. If, for example, the lady splits and the man steals, the man takes all the money. If the lady steals and the man splits, then the lady takes all the money. And for that, the payoff matrix is perhaps even easier to understand. If they cooperate, they get one share each. If they both defect, they get nothing. And if, if you defect and your partner cooperates, you get all the money. And if, if the partner defects and you cooperate, you lose all the money. So I encourage you, I'll put links to multiple videos of Golden Balls and multiple videos explaining Prisoner's Dilemma. I I hope you check those out if there's any doubt about the concept and now we can get into the code. So here is the code. Um, in the REPL we have some 13 Python files and the only ones that I really want you to try to understand are the 10 strategies down here. The first three just run the simulation and the way they work is if we run it, the first file is it says main, it's actually a menu so you can choose to play a particular strategy against all other strategies and two you can play against the strategy as a human uh, a strategy of any uh, of your choice so if we select one for example it gives us this list of strategies that exist and um, if we say hey if let's say always collude strategy will play prisoners dilemma and it'll always collude it'll always cooperate it'll always be nice so if we select one it actually shows a result of 20 rounds of uh, always collude playing and what's interesting and what I what I what I've done here is combine the score against all other strategies with the score against itself because any strategy um, that is ridiculously successful will be copied and if everybody were doing it and the strategy uh, would yield nothing then obviously it's not a good strategy so the strategy's got to be viable even if everybody was doing it and it's got to be advantageous against all other strategies. So being nice gave you the overall score of 17.25 and in contrast I'm just going to run this one more time and we're going to say always defect. So we're going to select one and I think always defect is two. So his score is really high against all the other strategies, but scores zero against itself, yielding a pretty horrible average score. So as you can see, like logically it pays to be nice. Now I'm just going to um, quickly go through the 10 strategies that exist and leave you with a challenge of creating your own. So this is the always collude strategy. This is the entirety of the file. Um, so one returning one basically makes you collude, returning zero makes you defect. And when the game starts, the default strategy is to collude and onwards, from that move onwards, the strategy is to continue 
colluding. So you collude 100% of the time. Then the next one is always defect, and it's it's pretty much the, the mirror image, mirror opposite, where you defect at the start and you continue defecting. And I think this one is symbolized by, I think, what's the name? Wormtail from Harry Potter, and then this is Frodo from Lord of the Rings. So, um, so next one is random collude. So some kind of a gambler, but a good guy. So that's James Bond. And the idea here is you uh, create a random between one and five. And for numbers that are three, four, and five, you collude and you defect for one and two. So you got about 60% chance of colluding, 40% chance of defecting. So that's your, your role function. And in the play function, you basically, you return this role, whether you're starting or whether you're continuing. Random defect, there you go, Joker. And the random defect is also very, very similar, except you just go um, and defect 60% of the time. You use the same code structure for rolling. Next one is the grudger. Now, grudger actually uses opponent history, albeit uh, in a very, very basic way. And what the grudger does is it has a boolean, which is true by default, is to be nice. So it'll always collude, collude, collude until, until um, somebody right here defects against the grudger. And then be nice will become false. And if be nice is false, it'll always return uh, zero. So it'll always defect. So it'll collude until you betray it, and it'll always defect from that point on. Next is random. Well, that's just a 50-50 roll, no matter what happens. Next is mine, the Sunyan strategy. And uh, this is actually the highest scoring strategy. I haven't put in that much effort to create it, so I'm sure it can be improved upon, and this is your challenge. But the strategy records all of your opponent's previous moves and against opponents that are nice, 70% of the time or more, we collude, we're nice back. And if someone is nice less than 70% of the time, like 69% of the time, we defect. And yeah, that strategy works really well. Try it out. So this is also a really awesome one. Um, it, it's basically coded behaviorism. So it's called Pavlov, based on Pavlov's dogs. Ivan Pavlov was a famous Soviet um, psychologist. So he, he trained dogs to do amazing things. And what, what this strategy does is, by default, it returns a random. However, if the last move was successful, if opponent move was nice, then we are going to repeat whatever it is that we did when, uh, when we succeeded last time. So when Pavlov wins one point or two points, he's going to repeat whatever he did in the previous move. So whatever works, Pavlov is going to repeat. And that's it. Those are all the strategies. In the end, there's going to be one file called my strategy. Let me show you. And this strategy actually has just some basic um, always collude code. And I challenge you to create a strategy of your own. Be sure to check out all the other code, recycle whatever you like, and have a really high score. Um, approaching 19 and 20 is considered really good. Okay, have fun with it and see you all later.